everyone has to die sometime. But try telling that to Adrian Carton de Viart. Born in 1880 to an aristocratic family in Belgium, Adrian Carton de Viart first enlisted in the Second Boer War by claiming to be older than he was. In that war, he was shot in the stomach and groin and was sent home. At this point, I would note here that we will be hearing a lot about him getting shot. When the First World War broke out, de Viart enlisted again. In battle, he was shot a couple more times, this time twice in the face, losing an eye and part of his ear. The doctors gave him a glass eye, but this led to so much discomfort that he ripped it out and threw it out of a taxi window. From that point on, he opted for an eye patch. Despite having only one eye, he decided to return to fighting in the war, heading to the Western Front. There, he was shot seven more times, losing part of his left hand in the process. De Viart wanted doctors to amputate his mangled hand, but they refused. So he started to rip off the fingers on that hand until doctors finally agreed. Now missing an eye and a hand, he again returned to the battlefront, which led to him being shot in separate battles through the skull, ankle, hip, leg, and his other ear. He was awarded the Victoria Cross in 1916 and went on to live a life in Poland. Now you might think that he was done, but no. When Nazi Germany invaded Poland in 1939, he enlisted yet again. His series of mishaps continued as his plane was shot down by a German fighter jet over Norway. This might have been a good time to die, but of course he did not. He eventually made it back to Britain and then was sent to Egypt. While flying into Cairo, the engines on his plane failed and he crashed into the sea. He survived and swam to safety, but was captured by Italian forces and held as a prisoner of war. As a prisoner, despite having only one arm and one eye, he managed to escape by digging his way out. He posed as a peasant until Italian authorities found him and decided that he'd be better off as a messenger to Britain instead. After the war, he participated in several international missions, but even peacetime couldn't stop his string of injuries as he slipped on coconut matting in French Indochina, falling and breaking several vertebrae. This finally gave doctors a chance to remove the large amount of shrapnel from his old wounds. Finally retiring after that, he died in Ireland at the age of 83. That was adequately brutal. Please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon to keep these facts coming, and I'll see you in the future.